Israel receives a lot of other weapons from U.S. despite embargo on bombs. Despite the delay by the U.S. presidential administration in delivering one batch of bombs, Israel continues to receive other types of American weapons worth billions of dollars, according to Reuters. Senator Jim Risch, the top Republican on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, noted that despite the U.S. administration's refusal to deliver bombs worth tens of millions of dollars, a wide range of other military equipment is expected to be delivered to Israel. Among them are joint direct attack munitions, which convert dumb bombs into precision guided weapons as well as tank shells, mortars and armored tactical vehicles. According to Risch, these munitions are not moving through the approval process as quickly as they should. He noted that some of them have been in the works since December, while aid to Israel typically goes through the review process within a few weeks. Meanwhile, Gregory Meeks, top Democrat on the House of Representatives Foreign Affairs Committee, has halted the transfer of an $18 billion arms package to Israel, which includes dozens of Boeing Company F-15 aircraft. He is currently awaiting additional information on how Israel will use them. Rish and Meeks are two of the four American lawmakers who oversee major arms sales abroad. These actions in Congress are authorized by the heads and members of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee as well as the heads of the members of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. None of these deals are part of the spending package signed by Biden in April, which includes $26 billion in support for Israel and humanitarian assistance. Senator Chris Murphy, chairman of the Subcommittee on Near East, South Asia, Central Asia and Counterterrorism from the Democratic Party, expressed concern to Reuters about the fate of Rafa. I do not think it is our strategic or moral interest to help Israel conduct a campaign in Rafa that is likely to kill thousands of innocent civilians and not likely impact Hamas's long-term strength in a meaningful way, he said. A Victory Day Gift from Ukraine to Russia, they struck with drones and missiles. A Ukrainian long-range drone struck the Gazprom Neftekim Salavat refinery in the Russian Republic of Bashkortostan on the morning of the 9th of May. The drone collided with a fluid catalytic cracking unit. It set a new record by traveling 1,500 kilometers. Gazprom Neftekim Salvat is one of the largest oil refining and petrochemical production companies in Russia. It specializes in the production of gasoline, diesel fuel and other types of petroleum products. The Baza Telegram channel reported that the drone hit a catalytic cracking unit, causing a small fire. Gazprom Neftekim Salvat carries out a full cycle of processing of hydrocarbons and produces gasoline, diesel, fuel, kerosene, other petroleum products, liquefied gases, butyl alcohols, plasticizers, polyethylene, polystyrene, ammonia and urea. Besides, drones attacked the Pervy Zavod oil refinery in Russia's Kaluga Oblast on the night of the 9th to the 10th of May. Several powerful explosions have been heard in the Zazinsky district in Kaluga Oblast. Local residents reported they heard the distinctive sounds of several UAVs flying overhead, after which a fire broke out in the area near the oil refinery. In addition, Moscow Mayor Sergei Sobyanin stated that a drone flying toward the Russian capital had been downed in Moscow Oblast. Three more drones were allegedly destroyed in Bryansk Oblast. Drones belonging to the security service of Ukraine have struck two oil transshipment depots in Russia's Krasnodar Krai. The source said the drones hit two oil depots in the village of Yurovka near the city of Anapa in Russia's Krasnodar Krai. These oil depots are transshipment points for the supply of fuel to Russian troops in occupied Crimea as they are located near the peninsula, the source said. Ukrainian special services officially refrained from commenting on drone attacks on Russian defense industry facilities and the Russian oil refining industry which supply its defense. An oil depot in occupied Luhansk was struck by ATA CMS missiles causing a mass fire at the facility, the Moscow-installed head of the occupied region, Leonid Pasechnik, claimed. Fires in Russian-held territory have increased fourfold since Britain's delivery of Storm Shadow missiles as Ukraine continues to set the stage for its much-anticipated counter-offensive. Satellite data show more than 900 war-related fires have occurred in Russian-held territory in Ukraine in the last two weeks, likely caused by missile strikes. The fires have spanned the front line from the city of Kharkiv in the east of Kherson in the south at a frequency of more than four times as many as the two weeks before. According to an analysis by The Economist, the long-range weapons are capable of striking fortified positions.